very nearly about sailing March 2024. Um, this one, basically, I said in the last video I was going to make a couple of jigs. I made some jigs for the table saw, didn't manage to make the get the uh, router table, didn't tidy up the workshop. Lucy's down in a few days, so she's going to be doing that for chocolate. So I made a couple of jigs, made a couple of things just to test it out. Uh, one of which is a sort of panel door type thing. Um, this is very scruffy, it's just to see if the jig worked. And the other one is this thing, which is a thing that fits together and stores away in a space. And at the same time, it becomes one of those, and it's actually a speaker stand. So I'll show you that later. But anyway, let's go and have, let's have a look at the jigs first and see what see what they look like. Very useful, by the way. Very very useful indeed. And that's got nothing to do with it. That's the trick of that. There's a story behind that which I will probably never tell. Um, but it's broken. Soon to be replaced. Right. So I've made two jigs. The first one is a crosscut sled thing, which you've seen a million times. <laughs> this is very rough and ready. It's just a fence at the back. I've actually done a 45 as well as a 90 degree. I, I, that was a mistake doing the 45. I'm either going to make another one of these or fill that in because I'd actually designed it so that the width was just right so that I could do different angles um, anyway. So as I say, it's very rough and ready, not quite finished yet. I need to put something on the back there. That's to protect it as the blade, protect your hand as the blade runs through. And it's got two rails underneath, very important two rails to show you that when I put it on the thing. What I'm going to do in a minute is I'm just going to put some, uh, what is it called, paste wax on there just so it slides a little bit better. These are pretty tight. The other one that I've made is, I don't know what you call this, an upright thing that fits over the fence and you can hold pieces of wood Hang on. and you can hold pieces of wood upright. Uh, there's a project coming up that I need that for. I'll give you an example of how that works this, this month, but the project uh, I'll do next month, or I might not video it, I don't know. So here's a nice little project, which is something to do with the boat. You know that I do, uh, music is my uh, one of my passions. I know I do the sort of jokey uh, Christmas musical special things, but I've got a nice little sort of workstation thing set up here um, with a digital audio workstation. Um, I've got a... Uh, MIDI controller thing which I barely understand but what's great is it look, it lights up and you can twist things and it lights up and you can program things and did I say it, it lights up and it's what a couple of years ago I did a jokey thing taking samples from the BBC Symphony Orchestra and doing I think I can't remember was it Jingle Bells or, or something that I did on it um, but also I've, I've always had a guitar on board and I used to be a bass player um, picture of me in a band black and white photograph and I've got black hair now photographs are in color and I've got white hair that's not justice for you is it um, but for the bass I needed some practice amps and I bought these black star things I bought this plus an extension and they're actually pretty good and they've also got an auxiliary in so I tend to you I've tended to use them um, wow. The audio quality is actually fantastic, and I've tended to use them when I'm doing sort of recording stuff. So this is where I put bass down against a, a backing track. See if you can guess what the tune is, by the way. And it's going to be too much of a faff to move these, and they're also a little bit restricted in what they can do, and the fact is that they're disposable batteries rather than rechargeable ones. So I recently bought a... Mackie Free Play Live, which I'll show you in a second, um, to replace that. And it's a small unit and it's rechargeable, so these are going to stay where they are. But it's a bit awkward because I need to build a stand for it, so I'm going to try using my new jigs and so on and build a stand. Guess what it is? That? Never mind. These are actually, these, these go up loud enough and they're actually very good quality, but the Mackie is sort of 75 watts RMS. Right, so this is the Mackie Free Play. It's a sort of, it's 150 watts uh, peak, which works out to about 75 RMS. And it's like a mini PA type system. Normally you have them, um, they put them on these poles. I'll show a picture just here somewhere. Um, 
but I don't really, you know, I've got limited headroom in the boat. Uh, and very often people have these type of things as stage monitors where you need to, you really need to tip it back a little bit um, so that the, the sound isn't going in. So what I want to do is to make a kind of stand for it. Um, I'm not, <laughs> people always have to say this on YouTube, didn't they? I bought this with my own money. I bought it from Thoman in Germany, T-H-O-M-A-N-N. Um, and Toman are actually doing a really good deal at the moment. These things are normally, when they first came out, I think they were about 400, 500 pounds. Nowadays, they're about 300, 300 and something. I'll put an advert or so on it. And Toman, for some reason, for the whole of this year, they've, they're celebrating their 70th anniversary by flogging these off for 189 pounds, I think it is, which is bargains. I couldn't resist that. So yeah, this has got the battery built in. Um, it's got all the controls you need on the top. You can put in an auxiliary, you can Bluetooth it, you can put your instruments in. So I can use it for the double bass as well because it's proper full spectrum sound, but I need it to tip up. I can't put it on a pole. Um, and what they do for the top of the pole is they give you this little fitment thing. So what I'm gonna do is to build a little wooden slopey thing uh, which has got compound angles in it. I've drawn out a plan because what I want is I want something in two pieces that will slot together sort of crossways at an angle that I can put it in the same box as this and I've worked out that I can get it out of one piece of wood. I did a cardboard mock-up and it's probably best to actually show you this isn't it rather than try and explain it. Um, the other thing I like about this by the way is you can control it uh, via Bluetooth with your tablet or your your mobile phone to sort of put the volume up and down because obviously um, what you can do is if you come up to an anchorage you can turn the music right up and just blast everybody out and then when they've all gone you can put it down nice and quiet and just play some nice gentle classical music. Right anyway let's to the table saw, cut out a piece of wood, cut it in half and see how this is going to work. Hopefully a lot more accurate than that thing I had. So now I have got my <laughs> piece of wood and the next bit is the man is the first bit of magic where I'm going to cut this diagonal. Right so I hope this makes sense but what I've done, I've, the hammer's just there to keep weights down for a second, is I've set it up so that I've set it pretty much on the line so that that's on the uh, whatever it was an inch from here. This is unplugged by the way. And on the other side, and you just have to fiddle about with this for a little bit. If I push this forward, I've also lined it up so that that's on there. Right, so the next thing I need to do is where these two pieces of wood are going to kind of slot into each other is to actually cut the slots and I'm doing this by, I actually am clamping it this time, so I've got this clamped here and I've worked out, and I did make a cardboard template that I need to cut something five and a half deep, so I've set five and a half centimetres on there. Um, raise the blade up and then it's a question of doing this and then I'm going to um, cut it slightly smaller and then kind of creep up on it because all I need to do is to make sure it's kind of the width of this.
Now, dado stacks aren't actually illegal in the UK. I know there's a, a rumour that they are, but you can't use them in commercial premises because I don't think you can get the insurance. I think there's some really clever dado stacks now that are actually quite safe that people have made. But um, right, so here's the thing. Yeah, I made that too loose. Um, tightened up on the second one but I cut them both from the same side. One needed to come from there and the other one obviously needed to go from the top because otherwise, anyway. So it literally just took a couple of seconds but I made a couple more of these and now I'm going to cut these properly. Only one of which can be done on the table saw. The other one, because it's at a funny angle, will have to be done with a good old fashioned tenon saw. Right, so if I wasn't guessing before which I was, this is, I think you can see here, this, this, these two pieces now slot together the right way around um, and using the same principle up here what I've done is I've had to make space for this screwy thing to go in there and I'm going to epoxy that in and I've just found out that my epoxy my West Systems epoxy seems to have gone off um, I didn't know it could do that but um, I don't know I haven't actually used it for ages, so this is, makes sense. This sort of gets buried in here, and then, hang on, I've just got to reach across the front of you. Excuse me for being so rude. And then this thing, which actually holds the speaker, so let me screw it in and show you properly. That screws in there. Actually, that's about right and then that's kind of level with that, need to obviously line it up. And then you can see that it's going to, everything's going to sort of angle back nicely. It's all going to fit together. Perhaps not as tight as I would have wanted it to be, but that's going to be plenty strong enough for what I want. And the important thing is it's demountable. Yeah, okay. Uh, the other thing you might notice is here's the compound angle bit at the bottom here. That's at, that's at 90 degrees, that's straight, that's fine. But this on the floor, I need to actually cut this at an angle. Um, so what I'm going to do is the very simple trick of, is you find a few bits of rulers and things of about the right height and a pencil, one of these flat pencils. Um, Actually, that's too high. That's pretty good. And then you draw a line across there, and you need to cut that out all the way along. And I'll show you that again on the saw because this is this is again where I'm going to use the slab. As you've only just thought of this. And it, no, I don't need to do that because I think the way that compound angles work is that the angle here on this face there I think that's the angle I need to set the saw blade at. Right, sorry about the wrong about cam camera angle. So I've set that to that, and that should be the same as the angle on that. So isn't it gratifying that that one trigonometry class that you actually stayed awake for, can you see that? That's absolutely pretty much spot on flat there. It's very good. A uh, thing that I completely forgot about is I did want to put feet on it. Um, and of course when you put your feet up, when you put feet on it, the feet sort of dig into that. So I had to cut little holes which isn't particularly 
neat, but otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't slot together. And do you know what? It looks all right. So how does it work? And I'm going to paint it black, by the way, as the Rolling Stones have ordered us to do. And I've got some hammered black, which I think will look reasonably the same as the plastic on on here. So how does it work? You ask. Well, that fits together like that nicely. Everything's all square. I did it a little bit looser than I normally do things, um, but I normally do them a bit too tight, but that's about right, as loose as I dare. And then this bit, which, as I say, if you put it on a stand, would normally go on the top. You literally just screw in. And then this fits on the top of that. I left a tiny little gap of about a millimetre, because I am going to put some foam, sticky foam padding on this. Um, and I think this is going to work out nice. The reason for the feet, by the way, is I think on the boat it might slide up, slide around on the, on the floor and stuff, so I just thought that would be a sensible thing to do. And then that just slots on there and it angles that up quite nicely. Right, so here's the deal. There's the electric base, there's the acoustic base. This is, I don't know if you've seen this one before, this is almost as old as Serenity, it's the one I've had forever. I wouldn't take it on long voyages, but for a week or so at a time, which is probably what I'm going to do a week or a month at a time, I'm happy to take that. And there's my pedal board. Um, that that is actually a bass thing. I might do two actually. That's that's for the acoustic guitar or the acoustic bass. That's power board. That's TC Helicon, which is vocal. Oh finger, which is vocal and um, guitar effects. That's a foot switch. A couple of it's cardboard because I'm going to replace that with something else. That's a bass octave pedal. Whoops, which is going to get replaced and probably go on the bass board. And that's a a bluesy thing. So. And there is the um, speaker. So battery powered, that's 15 hours. That's probably about 15 hours actually based on the current. So very, very portable. Um, but of course, this is not telling the whole story. Let's get rid of the base bits, which is that bit. Um, and I'll show it to you wired up. And let's do it again with, this, with the microphone switched on. So anyway, here is all the wiring. There's a lot of it. And what you can see is I've put some wood here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pedal box so that basically it's going to be like a suitcase. This is some this is some Oroco from the um, handrails that I saved, and it's nice because the pedal box is going to slope forward a little bit. And I've already got a slopey bit. All this wiring kind of gets hidden underneath the sort of shelves. It's going to look like a suitcase. Uh, wiring underneath. Then there's going to be a board with this stuff on it. Then there's going to be a removable top, and it means I and all I will have is I'll have a plug in the side for um, the guitar, another one for microphone, um, and then and one or two outputs for the Mackie Free Play Live. Very pleased with this. That's absolutely great, the way that's pointing outputs and the way that this has worked. Absolutely fantastic. It can all get packed away, all safe and sound. Um, might be the next project. Probably not, because I need to do a lot of deciding about what to have here. I am going to make a separate bass once I've taken the bass pedals out. I've also reversed the bass reverse the pedals because I prefer to have my pedals the other way around but everybody else likes to have them. This is one, two, three, four, etc. and it's the way that the ins and the outs are actually ordered on pedals but hey ho. So yeah you can see this I've had to split the power supply so there is a, a 9 volt one, a 12 volt one and this little thing is, is great. You can see it's, I don't know if you can see it, so it's on 99% so this will last for ages. That will last for ages, at least a weekend's worth of stuff, and then I can recharge it. Right, so that's it for this month. Um, very pleased with the way those jigs worked out. I'm, I'm not a natural woodworker, as you well know. I spent an awful lot of last year getting my woodworking skills up to speed. Um, it might feel, and it probably is slightly true, that I'm actually putting off uh, some of the galley work and so on, because I'm actually scared of messing it up but I'd rather have a little bit more practice, get into the swing of it. Um, I might actually make the box for the pedal boards because I've got a couple of drawers to make uh, in the boat that are quite critical and I want them to look right, partly because I'm using, I'm going to use 
uh, wood that was used for something else in the boat and repurpose it and I'm never going to get the same wood again it's got a lovely sort of mahogany ply on it but um, so anyway yeah I've got the speaker which is looking down on me I've got my two lovely red guitar I don't know why, I don't know why it's important that they're red but I've got my two lovely guitar red guitars here um, and yeah I'll count that as a success no workshop tour which I mentioned last time simply because Lucy's coming down in a few days time uh, funny enough she always turns up around about Easter time she's going to be a week, 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 uh, a week late this time because she seems to think she's going to get lots of Easter eggs and she's made it very clear that she doesn't have to work for, East, for chocolate Easter eggs but she will do other work for chocolate so the, the workshop's going to get sorted out um, the weather had started to turn nice. The clocks are going forward uh, tonight, actually, because I'm doing this on Saturday. I will edit it and get it out on the Sunday, the last day of the month. Um, let's look forward to this year. The, the health thing that I mentioned back in January, by the way, a bit, of a bit of a setback on that, not from my point of view, but the big research project has been pushed back a year because they had some quality issues with the laboratory uh, went and rechecked um, how the samples were being handled um, but it's still good news and I'm still optimistic I will put a link down to the video where they gave an update so if you know anybody who's affected by ME, CFS or, or, or things like that do, do share that with them because there's good work coming along from a personal point of view I seem to be tolerating the medication much more so I'm actually up to the dose to, to nearly no, actually, it's about half. It's about half of, of the of the final dose, uh, which is which is good. So um, my body has obviously got used to that, and it's not fighting that. So um, do you know what? This is going to be a good year. It already is a good year. Very happy with the way this has gone. Have yourself a great April, and I shall see you next month.